Today we're going to talk about the next steps on the Game Boy Mega Machine. As you can see since the last video on it, the uh, top cabinet has been put on it and it is massive now. It is really, really quite tall. <laughs> Today we're going to swap out this janky looking bit of breadboard that is used to control the analog filters in all of the rows. Oh god, this thing's been sat in here for about a year now since I actually put in the filters, so it's about time that we actually upgraded this part of the machine. And this is what we're going to swap it with, the polyphonic filter controller, which has uh, built-in filter controls as well as an envelope generator on the side. But this isn't any envelope generator. If you notice on the back it has six cards, uh, this isn't a coincidence that there's actually six voices in this Game Boy synthesizer, six rows of eight Game Boys. It, this is because each of the separate synth voices have a separate envelope generator each that are all being controlled at the same time by the same knobs, so they're exactly the same, except for one fundamental difference. That fundamental difference being they are triggered at different times. This means you get full polyphonic expression, much like analog synthesizers like Prophets and Junos and stuff like that. To keep it simple, all of the same parameters on the different voices are controlled by the same knobs. This means changes in parameters are quick and easy to do. The thing is, if all of these were separate knobs on the different voices, you wanted to change the attack time of the overall thing, well, it would be a pain because you'd have to change six knobs to do the same thing. And whilst it is an interesting timbre to have different parameters on each synth voice, it's just a little bit naff compared to the amount of faff. But that's why there are offset knobs on each of the front of the filters, meaning that you can have different parameters on the voices if you really want anyway. But at the same time, it is set up like a traditional polyphonic synthesizer. I've also put together this 1007 MIDI Muso MIDI to CV converter. It's slightly modified with an extra board on the back, so it's able to talk to these poly filters around the back of the board instead of a lot of wires on the front, which makes it a lot neater. And this is going to be able to talk to Yuha's polyphonic module that is just before this in the Game Boy Mega Machine. Bye bye breadboard, it was nice knowing you. <laughs> okay, so it's connected up to the power supply and the filters above. This is a paraphonic filter offset control. It's much like just the filter knob on a polyphonic synthesizer. And you'll notice it treats all of these LEDs, which are signals for each of the voices, one through to six, it treats them all in exactly the same way. The LFOs, which are based on the electric Druid chip, the MGen 8 c if I flip it into loop mode, it acts like some sort of a LFO. And you can see it goes there, but if I start adjusting it, and thankfully, just a tiny slight differences, it actually makes them go out of sync, which I think is pretty cool. It's a bit of an accident, but this means that it's gonna add some offset effects to the filters. You'll see the signal lights are now shining out of sync on the voices. I've only got three of the voices hooked up at the minute. The other three at the top, like I said in the last video, I'm focusing on finishing these three rows first and I'm going to basically copy it up to the top one because the top one is a bit of a mess right now. So as I add the paraphonic offset, it just all just goes into complete red mode and you'll see that being reflected in the status LEDs on the separate filters. I haven't yet got the Game Boys running through it. However, in self-oscillation mode on the resonance and just the CV just being controlled all separately it actually sounds pretty funky. So what you're hearing are three filters resonantly feeding back but slightly out of phase with each other. It just got it just has that quite funky, interesting sound to it. I've included a direct recording of about five or so minutes of me just changing the parameters and stuff on this certain effect, and that is available to download over on Patreon if you want it for special effect sounds and stuff to sample and stuff, then be my guest. So since shooting that little bit of testing, I spent a fair few hours trying to figure out why it was sounding really warbly and strange. If you notice though, it wasn't quite a clean resonance, it was a bit Odd. and it took me a while to realize that the power supply that all of these things are plugged into around the back there's a dedicated power supply for the filter section well it was being overstretched by everything and it was causing it to be extremely warbly I upgraded that last night and since then it's sounding pretty damn clean and good playing with it now it's really cool and I'm really quite annoyed with myself that I didn't actually put control voltage over the envelope generator knobs the thing is is it's got quite a weird sound to it you don't usually hear like six filters going out of sync with each other 
behind the same envelope generator. So now I'm going to record five minutes again, but with the new power supply, and we can compare back and forth with the different power supplies. It does actually sound different. <laughs> So now we know the filter controller works, it'll be rude not to get these Game Boys through the filters. So this top line on the Matrix Mixer lets us select what's going into filter number one, and we want bus one from the Game Boys. Ooh. <laughs> So there we go, that's the installation of the first polyphonic filter controller. All in all, I think it adds an interesting timbre to it. However, at the same time, it does, well, it's, it does the filter's job. It actually subtracts from the actual uh, sound of the Game Boys, which in essence sort of spoils the unique nature of the Game Boy Mega Machine sound. In my opinion, it actually sounds like stacked Game Boys without the filter. You get that real kind of essence of like a Game Boy sound, but in a big, weird, frumpy kind of fashion. When you put a filter on top of that, it's sort of takes the harsh edge off the Game Boy sounds and it starts making it sound a little bit more like a traditional analog synthesizer. And why would I have gone to all of this effort to just make a traditional analog synthesizer? But not all is lost, I think the magic is going to happen when the VCAs come in and that would mean we'll be able to envelope the dry digital sounds coming from the Game Boy Mega Machines but also mix them in with the filtered sound as well and that's where I think it will sound pretty weird and interesting and really come into its own because it'll have a big mixture of everything put together into this rather large and in charge 8-bit but not 8-bit and analog sound in a weird way. Don't get me wrong, I'm really quite pleased and surprised with these polyphonic filter controllers. The fact that they go out of sync when they're looping makes it sound really strange and it's really caught me off guard with the weird, unpredictable and quite juicy and strange sounds that it's actually been putting out. It's pretty funky. In between now and the next video, I'm going to be building the second polyphonic filter controller. So there's going to be two filters per row, which means you can have them wired up like stereo filters or something else like that. I'm not sure what that other filter is going to be doing exactly, but we'll figure it out. I'm also going to be adjusting the level that the Game Boys go into the filters. The thing is they go in a little bit quiet but that's okay it's just going to be a couple of adjustments of resistor values on the back of the filters. After that it's going to be doing a similar approach to the filters by building stereo VCAs, dual VCAs that can be plugged into whatever configuration you want and after that depending on space there's going to be a few effects 
possibly. And then it's a case of getting the other three voices going because right now it's a little bit limited with only three voices. It'd be great if there's a complete six voice synthesizer. It'll be pretty amazing then. And then after that, it's concentrating on the controller section and the Leslie speakers. And then we should be done. So yeah, fingers crossed. I reckon maybe by the end of the year, it'll be pretty damn close. Maybe, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I've included a lot of direct recordings and sound banks and stuff like that over on my Patreon from this video uh, because needless to say, Patreon helps fund the crazy machines like this. And you will be able to see this in real life if you want to come to the museum, which will be open after lockdown and this and that and the other. And needless to say, thank you very much to my Patreon supporters because yeah, I would just wouldn't be able to do this stuff without you. So thank you very much. And I do vlogs over there on the projects that I've been building and over time. And they're usually a bit more technical and rambly and stuff. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, there will be information on my website, links below. But if you want to like hear it being talked about as the process of it being built, then go and check it out on the Patreon. Anyway, I've been Luke Mum No Computer. This is the Game Boy Mega Machine. Don't forget to subscribe and yeah, don't be scared to try it.